So I gave period two the option. They, they kind of decided for you guys. They don't want this lesson on tomorrow's quiz, OK? This one lesson has it all, and it's going to start to tie it all together. I'm going to first give you an example of what a power series looks like. You guys haven't seen that yet? No? Like, we haven't talked about how your calculators are programmed and how they work and things yeah, like that? OK. Yeah. So again, when you hit sine, it doesn't know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It has no idea what that is. What it does know is it's a truncated version of this one. This one goes on forever. But when you hit sign on the calculator, you know how your calculators say float six, float to six decimal places? It uses a truncated version of this. It is super accurate. It's accurate to like 15 decimal places when you float six or whatever. Uh, so it has all the decimal, more decimal places than you'll need. Um, but anyway, not today. Pretty soon we're going to be building these from scratch, OK? Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not as bad as it sounds. Tonight, they're going to give you this. This is going to be given, OK? So there, there will be, on tonight's homework, they're, they're not going to tell you what it's equal to. They're just saying, OK, here's an a, a, a endless polynomial. And they're going to ask you to find the interval of convergence, what we call the domain. We did this earlier in this chapter. Find the domain. Find the x's that make this converge, OK? Now, it's very different from this one. So I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to copy down the one that was on your quiz, okay? The way we would do the right side is very different from the way we would do the left side. So what's the main difference between them, if, if you guys see it? I don't know if you guys see it. How do we how do we do the one on the right earlier last week? No. No. It was the geometric test, right? What is R for this problem? So the one on the right has that's what R is. And the geometric test is this, right? The absolute value of R is less than one. So we would substitute that in. And we would break it down to two parts, right? I'm going to skip a step. I'm going to multiply everything by 3 and add 2 all at once. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Uh, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And, and I think this was the answer on the quiz. OK? Super easy. So if it's geometric, you're highly encouraged to do it this way. You'll be done in no time. If you don't recognize it and do it the way we're going to do this one, it's way more work and it's harder. Because the one on the left is not geometric, so we will have to use the ratio test. I think Tanner said that. But we said the, that the ratio test is flawed. Where is it flawed? When it's equal to 1, right? When it's equal to the endpoint. So if it's equal to 1, 
what tends to happen is we don't know what's happening at the endpoints. For this one, I definitely know this is the final answer. But if I were to do the ratio test, I don't know what's happening at negative 1, and I don't know what's happening at 5. So we have to do a further ex, you know, exploration to see what's actually happening at the endpoints, because the ratio test is flawed. So if you get this, qu this question, this one, on tomorrow's quiz, I would just do it the way we did it last week. This one, the one on the left, period 2, has opted not to have that on the quiz, okay? But it is on the homework, so... Here we go. You, do you guys have enough time to copy down this theorem, theorem 3? Can anyone explain what it means? I'm going to erase the stuff on the right. No? Okay. It's saying this. This guy, we're always going to be able to find x's that make him converge. That's what it's saying. I can always find an x that will make it converge. So let's go through the options here. They're saying, okay, one option is let x be a. What is a minus a? And what's 0 plus 0 plus 0 forever and ever? And that technically converges, right? The infinite sum is 0. It's trivial, but it's an answer. And sometimes that's, all, that's the only number we'll ever be able to find. So let's say I had this problem, x minus 3 n starts with 1 to infinity. If I let x be 3, the infinite sum is 0. It's convergent technically, right? It's kind of boring, but that's what it is. And some homework questions, that's the only number you'll be able to find. If I make everything 0, that's the only way I'm going to have an answer, okay? Those are the boring questions. You're not going to have very many of those. The next one says, sometimes it doesn't matter what x is. It's always going to converge. So it goes to 0 so quickly that regardless of what we pick for x, it's going to converge, OK? This one, by the way, regardless of what I pick for x, it's always going to converge, and it converges to sine. It's always going to have an infinite sum regardless of what x is. And the most interesting question is this one. It's going to converge for certain values. So negative r, and r stands for the radius, by the way. And I'll, I'll talk about the radius again later. And then I would add little a over. But then again, I'm going to put a question mark here and here. I still don't know what's, what's happening at the left endpoint and right endpoint, and that's where we have to do a further S, uh, investigation, okay? So we're going to go to our first example. Find the radius and interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is basically the domain. Every problem tonight's homework is going to start with the ratio test. Unless it's a geometric problem. You've seen this before. What's a better way of writing this red circle? Is that a true statement? Okay. And why did I do that? I can now throw away the negative 1, right? Because it's an absolute value. So this guy is going to be square root n plus 1. This is going to be 3 to the n, x to the n. Go and predict what goes here and here.
Hopefully you got that. And now I'm going to reduce using algebra. And this one, these technically don't reduce, so I, I'm not going to cancel them off. I'm going to highlight them. As n gets super large, how about George? What happens to the blue information? What does it approach? 1, right? And finally, when it's all said and done, I'm left with 3x in absolute value. And they wanted to converge. So what should I set this equal to? Less than 1 by the ratio test, right? On tonight's homework, you're always going to set it less than 1 because they, they're always asking for the convergence. Is this true or false? True. A positive 3 is allowed to move out of the absolute value. On your notes right here, make sure and take really good notes. It's this step I can identify the radius. The radius is going to be one-third. The leading coefficient has to be a 1 to identify the radius. If I had this, the radius is not 5 because the leading coefficient is not 1 yet. So... Could I factor out the 2 and divide the 2 over? One second. Now the leading coefficient is a 1, and I can now say the radius is 5 over 2. Okay, that's a little side note. Yes? It, it went to 1. So what's the most important thing on the top? The rad n. The most important thing on the bottom, rad n, right? That's one way we could do it. Okay, so now that I know the radius, that part has been completed, check. Now I'm going to move on to the interval of convergence. I'm going to break up my absolute value. And I'm going to stress this with a red question mark. This is not the final answer. I still don't know what's happening at negative one-third or positive one-third. And the reason for that is we're using the ratio test, and the ratio test says we don't know what happens at the endpoints or when it's equal to 1. And I think this, this line that we're on right now will, will start to tie this whole chapter together. My problem is this, negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n, x to the n in the numerator, right? I'm going to drag that down for a second. What happens if I let x be negative 1 third? I get negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n. What is negative 1 third to the n called? Or what's another way of writing that information? Over 3 to the n? Same thing on the right. What happens when x is 1 third? I have negative 1 to the n. 3 to the n, 1 over 3 to the n. The right side's a little bit easier. I can cancel those, and I'm left with this one. So here's where we are. Every question on... In, in this whole chapter so far has looked like this. This is an infinite series, and we have to figure out if this guy converges or diverges. What's the difference in this section? It took a lot of work to get here, right? 
in every previous section, this was the start of every problem. So now we have to use all our tools to identify if this guy's convergent or divergent. I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to decide if this inequality holds or if it converts to this one. Same thing here. Is it this inequality or the one with the equal sign? I don't know. That's why there's a question mark, okay? So how about Montana? Montana? What, what test would you want to use on this one? Mm -hmm. It's alternating signs, so it makes sense to start there. Do you think this decreases? Can you guys visualize that? The next term out would have to get smaller. Does it go to zero? So we're going to put convergent by the alternate series test. I do want to see that, okay? I want to see what you got, whether you got convergent or divergent in the test that you use. That's very important. What tends to happen, you guys get so good at this that you're like, oh, it's convergent, obviously, right? But when it comes down to the AP test, they need to see the documentation. What, what test did you use? Okay, so this is what I know so far. I'm going to bring this down. I have an X. I have an equal sign here at one third because I got it to converge. The convergent means we're going to pick up an equal sign. I still don't know what's happening on the left. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. Try and figure out this left side. How about Alan? What happens to the blue information? What's a way I can condense it? You're right. They do. They are like terms. They do simplify. Yes, negative one to the power of n plus n. Can I just write it as negative one to the power of two n? And let's just focus on that for a second. That's 100% correct. Is that equal to this? A power to a power we multiply, right? So what's negative 1 times negative 1? And what's 1 to any power? Right? 1 to any power is always 1. So the blue information gives me the value of 1. And I'll keep them blue so you can see where it came from, okay? And then who thinks they have the appropriate test for that one? If I take the limit as it goes to infinity, it gives me zero, and zero is inconclusive. It, you can't use a p-series when there's a plus one. Huh? It is positive, and I can't compare it, but I just did in my head the inequality goes the wrong way. <laughs> limit comparison test was the final answer. So this one is divergent by the limit comparison test. That's all you need to show. Now, if you actually have to work out the limit comparison test on paper, that's fine. But this is the requirement. I need to see conversion, divergent, and the test that you use. That's the most important thing, okay? Next year, we'll add another layer. Like, if you were to do this on the AP test, you still want to get it full credit. Because does anybody know what, what we're missing here? What allows me, huh? No. It, what allows me to use the limit comparison test? Prior to all that, you had to say the terms are always positive. Since the left one is always positive, I'm now allowed to use the limit comparison test. Yeah? Why would just the comparison test fail? Uh, I think the inequality went the wrong way. We want to show that it's bigger than, but it's actually smaller than. Should I write it out? Yeah. So we're going to take this guy. No, maybe I'll just clone him. This one's divergent. I want to show this guy's bigger than, right? But he's actually smaller. Oh, oh, I had the P series. 
control okay. that system. Okay, so if you're not sure where we are, I'm going to go back to the theorem. We just saw an example of this guy. We were able to find the radius and interval of convergence. Let's do another problem. It's the first one that takes the longest to explain. After that, it's just downhill. Come on. There it is. Same question. Find me the radius and interval of convergence. I'm going to pause the video because... Yeah, um, this is asking for the interval of convergence of power series. We're going to build them too, so there are other questions associated with that. Yes. Okay, uh, any questions on my first step here? Maybe the n factorial is a little bit confusing, or the n plus 1. Should I explain that part? Yeah? Yeah, OK. So in reality, I have n plus 1 factorial squared, which is n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. We know this guy can really be n plus 1 times n factorial n plus 1 times n factorial. And I think that's what I wrote down here. Now I'm ready to reduce. Cancel, 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 cancel. And I'm left with x squared over 2 squared, which is 4, n plus 1. And I still have to take the limit. I haven't taken the limit yet. Normally I use the highlighter and do it in the previous step. I'm just going to write it out. Who knows this limit? Yeah. Oh, you're right. There's another one there. Okay. As n gets super large, you should focus your full attention to the denominator, right? The denominator. The x is not going to cycle. X is a real number. What is a real number over infinity squared? Zero. So this guy comes out as a zero. And is that less than one? So in the big picture here, in our theorem, where are we? Are we at statement one, two, or three? Statement two. Regardless of what, what happened, it's always going to be less than one. So I'm done with the problem. This is, uh, the interval of convergence is called all real numbers. Who knows how to write all real numbers? 
uh, the fancy R? Yeah. yeah. I think they're looking for this, though. Negative infinity to infinity is called the interval of convergence. So interval of convergence. And the radius is infinity. It's a two-part question. They want me to find the radius and interval of convergence. So I think that's the way they would write it in the back of your book, okay? Yes. You said this was the first statement that we had. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so, why is the radius infinity? I mean, <laughs> why is the radius one third here? What is the radius? The radius, okay, so if. I could start graphing these for you and it'll blow your mind, but I'm, I, want, I, I want to say that for later, okay? <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's, it's really cool to see it in action, but um, the radius is like uh, almost like a circle. Every, and everything in the circle will make the, the functions be equal to each other. So let's go back to sine. Sine of x equals that fancy thing, right? Let's pretend the radius is 1. It's not. It's infinity. But So here's sine, okay? And this guy would be in red. And here's one, by the way. Let's call that one and negative one. So the, the red one would go here, and then after this one, it would diverge. So the red one equals sine just for the radius and interval of convergence. The interval of convergence would be from negative one to one, and the radius... Let's see if I have a radius here. Damn it, that didn't work. Lane. And the radius would be 1. What we just got was infinity, right? So what did that mean? It means it's always going to be on top of this one. Forever and ever. And the radius would be infinity. I that makes sense. So going back to this one, we did take the limit of the blue one, and we got one, right? And the three was already there. We did take the limit. I just didn't write it because that limit was easy. This one. This one was so cluttered that I, I pulled it out and then took the limit, right? So if I want to, I can do it in blue again. Her current question is, how can we even take the limit in the, the previous stuff? I could have. It's just I was telling her there's so much clutter here, it was hard to see what was left behind. So what's the limit of the blue information? Zero as well. Does that make sense? Oh, no, no, no. The first one is one, so I think mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Other questions on this one before we do our last example? Yeah. So Well, we always said it less than one, uh, right. but sometimes we won't get something less than one. Oh, so if it's not true, then you have to do the inequality? Like if it's supposed to be less than one, but it's not? If it's not, uh, we'll... Like if the limit yeah, is not less than one? You'll see what happens now. I'll, I'll try and pick an example that does that, okay? your <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's uh, exactly the same format as before.
Okay. Uh, let's let's try our last example here. Hopefully this works out. Uh, Evan had a very specific question, so I just did this in my head, and hopefully it gives us the result that we want. Okay. Go ahead and find me the interval of convergence and the radius. Okay. Um, so the limit as n goes to infinity. So this one is no longer a fraction, right? Right? I mean, if you want, you, you could flip it so that it's 1 over. Okay. Just, just no fraction. Just slide this over, you know. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just keep it that way. <laughs> we'll just keep it the way it is. It's making sense. So this is an n plus one. This is a four n times four, and this was an n. Okay. So that this is a, a appropriate setup, or you can just have one fraction. Okay. Okay. And now I'll reduce. What is the limit of this blue information? And we're left with 4x is less than 1. Let, this did not accomplish what I wanted to do. We're, we're going to finish it up, but here's I want to answer Evan's question. He asked, what if the limit is not less than 1? What, what would happen if I had squared there? So I'll write it off to the side n plus 1 squared times 4 times x all over n, the limit as n goes to infinity. What's the limit of that? Infinity. And when is infinity less than 1? Never. So his question was, what happens if it's not less than 1, right? And that's why I wanted to do this. That would bring us to condition number 1. Remember, this theorem says we always have to have an answer, but this, this math contradicted that. It says we can't find an answer. Right? Because an, an infinity is never less than 1. But the theorem says we have to have an answer. So what does the answer have to be? The number that makes it 0, right? So let's go to our problem. What number makes r 0? When x is 0, it makes everything 0. And 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0, right? So the only answer would be, Zero is the interval of convergence, and the radius is zero. Okay, because it's one point. One point. How does the radius of zero even exist? It's a point. Don't, don't even go there, because that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, let's finish this one up. Divide by four. So that's my radius. My radius is 1 fourth. You're going to split it up. You're going to let x be negative 1 fourth and investigate. Let x be 1 fourth and investigate to determine what our actual answer is. 
is it is this our final answer is this our final answer is it this one do i put an equal sign in both of them so i'll slow down again go ahead and plug it into the originals and see what you guys get Negative one to the two n just equal one. It does. So do we need to write that then to the right side? No, wait. Wait, is that is that negative one to the two n on the right side? No, that's the left side. How come you don't do um, one one of uh, one to the n over four over n on the right side? Well, what's one to the n? One. So I wrote one. Okay. So let's see. If I did write one to the end, how does it change anything? Nothing. It doesn't change anything. Okay. Your homework will be online. Um, it's, that one's not due tomorrow, but everything else is due tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Oh, so. What's the final answer? It's this one. There were no equal sign. That's my final answer. If one of them converged, I would get an equal sign somewhere. Yeah. They're not like terms. They're, you know, yeah.